This is KGW News at Sunrise. I don't know. My mind, I don't know. My mind is somewhere else right now. It's just hurt. that I can't even see my kids die and can't do nothing about it. A father tries to find the words to describe his incredible loss after two of his children died when they were electrocuted by a live power line. We're going to hear more from him and also the neighbor who risked her own life to save that man's grandchild from suffering the same fate. Plus. This is the first road that when I realized, okay, don't do it, it start, I started to slide on the ice. It was too late and I got stuck. And this morning, things still in the process of thawing out. This is video from Southwest Portland. Conditions, though, they vary depending on where you are, even really what street you're on. Let's talk about those streets. We have Drive 8 out and about throughout the Portland area this morning. Right now, uh, our Drive 8 crew is in North Portland. They're right there along North Lombard. Eric Patterson behind the wheel. China Green is in the navigator seat. Uh, we're going to hear from them coming up here shortly. Just, just about how bad some of these neighborhood streets really are this morning. And I know, Chris, you were, you were uh, wanting to say something. Well, so I was looking was at that. Doing? I mean, that's North Lombard. That's an ODOT road. Mm -hmm. So likely that got salted and treated. Any of the side streets off of there, same as they were last night. Right. What they're on actually mm -hmm. looks better than yeah. a lot of the streets that we haven't shown yet. We will get to yeah. that. We also want to talk about school closures and delays because there are a lot of them. Portland Public, Gresham Barlow, Beaverton, just a few of the big districts that canceled classes altogether today. In Southwest Washington, Vancouver and Evergreen Public Schools at this point at least are running two hours late. The full list of school closures and delays is scrolling there at the bottom of your screen and we will update those throughout the morning. Rodney. Well, generally speaking, we are thawing in most areas, but it's such a gradual thaw that the mess is still there, as uh, Chris Drew and Christine uh, mentioned. I do want to go over this. We talked about this yesterday. The National Weather Service in white, including the Portland metro area and up into parts of the coast range, an advisory today and tonight for potential freezing rain. This will not be an ice storm. This will be scattered spots where temperatures get down to around 30 and you have a period of some light icing. Okay, so we're dealing with that. And then as I get out of the way, uh, the blue out uh, centered over the Dalles. This is Hood River, the upper Hood River Valley and the East Gorge. Winter storm warning for five to ten inches of snow. So again, one of our big stories today, the good news is I-84 is open. The bad news is, yeah, there's a winter storm warning that you will be driving into if you go out that way. All right, here's the rain, and this is radar picking up in the West Gorge, some freezing rain, and also parts of Washington County. The radar is picking up. Here's Gaston, Forest Groves in this area as well. Just a touch of some light freezing rain out there. You can tell downtown, um, well, maybe you can't tell visually, but it is above freezing and it is thawing a little bit. I want to say you can tell it's thawing a little bit, but it is hard to see. 36 temperature in the coldest spots last night actually held steady and went up a couple degrees. So that's good news. Uh, Trotdale right now 36. Downtown Portland, 34. It's still warmer to the south. There's Salem at 47 degrees. Portland's going to be 36, 38, 35 today. The temperature just kind of holds steady. Again, be on guard, especially later today into tonight for the potential of some 30 degree freezing ice patches out there. Here's Chris. Rod, you mentioned Interstate 84 reopened in the gorge, but to your point, yeah, it's not pretty. This is a live look right now on Cascade Locks, and you can see plenty of slush and, and slop on the roads out there, despite crews out there treating and salting and plowing and whatnot. So just be aware of that. Also, SR 14 on the Washington side that remains closed, completely closed between Washougal and White Salmon. All right, into the east side freeways, I 205 bare pavement here at Stark. I mean, there's water on the roads, right? That's great to see, but conditions are variable. In fact, we get up to Jansen Beach and you can see that ODOT's got their snow plows lined up and ready to clear some more uh, stuff off the roads. Interstate 84 out near the Gateway District. Again, road spray on the freeways, but side roads are a completely different story this morning, guys. Thank you very much. Being a good father, but being a good father cannot solve this right now today. That father lost two of his children yesterday when a power line fell on their car in Northeast Portland. Meanwhile, his grandchild was also there not injured, but was taken to the hospital. This morning we're hearing more from that father. Right, and our Devin Haskins is live in Northeast Portland with more on this heartbreaking story. Devin, the details you're about to give us may be really tough for some people to hear. Yeah, a tragic story uh, uh, for sure. And so we're here on Northeast uh, Siskiyou in Northeast Portland, just off uh, 122nd Avenue behind me over my shoulder. There's an SUV in the distance. It's a red SUV. It's uh, 
has a broken windshield and there's uh, branch debris on top of it from when that power line fell onto a branch or when a branch fell onto the power line knocking it into that SUV. Three people were inside. Witnesses tell us that uh, the car then caught on fire. That's when those inside started to get out. Portland Fire says that's when two of the adults got out. They touched the ground and, at the, car, and the car at the same time and that's when they were electrocuted and died. KGW spoke with the dad of one of the victims inside the SUV. He says it was his 21-year-old daughter, Taja Leah, and her boyfriend, who he, who he called Nash. He says they were coming over because their power was out. The dad says when they heard the loud boom from the power line falling, they saw the car catch on fire, and that's when he says he saw his, er, that's when he says his 15-year-old son ran to help. My son tried to go down, my 15-year-old son tried to go down there, and I told him don't go down there, just get away from him, and he slid. And he touched the water, and he, and he died, died too. That dad says his son, 15-year-old Tehran Briggs, was a sophomore at uh, Milwaukee High School. His, uh, the, uh, unfortunately, there was also another loss in this story, his daughter, was six months pregnant. The baby, the nine month old, his grandchild was taken to the hospital. A witness actually uh, saw the, uh, the power line fall as well on the SUV, ran to help, putting her own uh, life at risk, grabbed the baby off the boyfriend's chest and got him to safety. Back to you. All right, thank you, Devin. Reporting on that very difficult story for us this morning in Northeast Portland. There are now a total of 10 weather-related deaths since the storm first started last weekend. We know five of those deaths are suspected to be from hypothermia, four in Multnomah County, one of those in Tiger. One of those deaths is a woman who spent time at Blanche House. Meanwhile, warming shelters closed their doors yesterday despite the lingering ice. Many homeless people used pads of cardboard to get around Old Town yesterday and burned fires to stay warm. If they could let it stay, you know, for the rest of the day to, to, uh, until the snow melted, that would have been ideal. I mean, I don't even know what to say to that. Somebody dying because, of, you know, they're freezing to death. That's just, that's kind of scary. Two other people died during the storm as well. One in Lake Oswego after a tree fell on their home and hit them. One person living in an RV in Portland died after a tree fell and hit them. Meantime, thousands of people still dealing with power outages this morning. You can see the numbers there on your screen. More than 9,000 Pacific Power customers in Oregon still without electricity. And for PGE, a little under 6,000 customers in the dark still. By the way, you don't see Clark Public Utilities in southwest Washington up there. That's because power has been restored. We mentioned all the school closures and delays this morning just a few minutes ago. Most districts made those decisions based on how icy a lot of neighborhood streets still are, but some schools are also dealing with broken water pipes and damage from fallen trees. A lot of our buildings um, lost power for a significant period of time, and as the power gets turned back on, those pipes start to warm up, they unfreeze, and then all of a sudden we find out, oh, there's a leak, and then we have flooding. That was Shelly Bailey Shaw with the Beaverton School District. With all of these missed days of classes now, some families are starting petitions to have their kids' midterm exams canceled or postponed. Just a reminder, today's full list of school closures and delays is running at the bottom of your screen. And a little good news from TriMet. Partial service on the Max Blue Line resumed last night. The Blue Line is only running between Hatfield Government Center in Hillsborough and the Goose Hollow Jefferson stop in Southwest Portland. Crews have been working nonstop to clear ice from the tracks, but it's been a challenge. Shuttle buses continue to serve Max Blue Line stops from Goose Hollow on, as well as other Max lines. Bus service remains limited system wide. You can check TriMet.org for updates. All right, Rod Hill in the studio now to talk more about today's weather. What do you have? Rob? Still lots of weather headlines, but we are gradually moder modifying this cold air mass. And when I show you the seven day, you're going to see an upward trend. Mm. So that's exciting, isn't it? Yes. yes. All right. Here's a look at that watch warning map. And again, the new player is this advisory for freezing rain, which includes up into the coast range down into Portland um, and into uh, the West Gorge. We talked about this yesterday. This is for mainly later today into tonight as colder air gets pulled back out of the gorge into the valley. Not an ice storm, but scattered locations, potentially getting down to 30 degrees or so with some light 
freezing rain or icing. And then we have the storm warning again for uh, Hood River, Upper Hood River Valley right here out into the Dallas and pretty much much of Wasco County for five to 10 inches of snow. Temperatures are in the 20s out there in Hood River this morning. So my headlines generally in the Portland area, it's a rainy day with slow thawing as temperatures are going to be above freezing, but only in the 30s. East wind, this is huge. It calmed last night, which allowed improvement in the area. But the winds will quickly refire later this morning and then this afternoon be gusting back to 45. That's what pulls cold air back into the valley and heightens that chance. We'll have some scattered light freezing rain icing areas all over again. We talked about the gorge winter storm warning and then highs next week by Tuesday back up into the 50s and then we're off and running with a return to a very mild weather pattern. Really wet out there this morning. You see the storm systems out to sea throwing clouds. Look how widespread the rain is from really uh, uh, blanketing the Oregon and the Washington coast this morning. It's 52 in Newport. Again, the coast has been warm. It's still warm in Salem, 47. I mean, Portland's up 36, so we actually saw rising temperatures last night, sign that this air mass is trying to warm itself. And even though it's 10 in Pullman and 20 in Pendleton and 25 in the Dow, this is warming air compared to 24 hours ago as well. Here's Futurecast 830 this morning. This does pick up the threat of some freezing rain, but generally speaking, I think this morning we're all holding above freezing at the main reporting sites with just rain falling. Uh, I am going to be paying attention when the sun angle starts to go down later this afternoon and the east winds at that time will be blowing back out of the gorge. Then we'll start to probably see some scattered locations saying, hey, we've got freezing rain. This is showing some snow, but if you look at the temperature profiling of the air mass, it's really warm the second you get up just a little bit in height, which means there's no way this is snow. It's either going to be all rain or you're going to get down to 30, 31. And you're going to say, hey, we've got some icing taking place with freezing and rain once again. Now, during the day tomorrow, we break it into a much drier day of just some scattered showers. Here's that east wind picking up this afternoon. There's a gust in Troutdale to 48 miles per hour. Again, you folks in Salem, Living pretty good life, aren't you? 47 degrees, some icy spots overnight tonight, though. We do think your temperatures will drop off overnight tonight. Uh, and here's that stair step of the 7 8, 38, 40, 43, 46, 48, 50, 53. It could even be 56 the Thursday following. Yes, that's your forecast.